Today we're going to look at recursive formulas. So for the warm-up, the following are examples of arithmetic and geometric sequences. Look at them and be able to define each type. So if you take a look at the two, you'll notice that arithmetic, um, it increases by an amount that you would add or subtract. So for example, the first sequence, and a sequence is a list of number uh, numbers, uh, we start at 2, and if you notice to get from 2 to 4, we would add 2, and then from 4 to 6, we would add 2. 6 to 8, add 2, and so on. So if you notice, we're adding the same number every time. If you take a look at the second sequence, again, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers, um, you would subtract 1, put it up here, and then you would set, subtract 1 again, and every time you're subtracting 1. And then if you look at the last arithmetic sequence, we're adding 0.5 every time. And so again, in this first list right here, you're adding or subtracting the same number every time, and that makes it arithmetic. If you take a look at our, ne our next set of sequences, which are geometric, instead of adding, you'll notice that we're multiplying. So we're multiplying here by 2 for the first sequence. So every term you take the previous term and you multiply by 2. If you take a look at the next sequence, we start at 1 and we get to 1 third. So that's multiplying by 1 third. And then if you multiply by another 1 third, you get 1 over 9. And by another 1 third, you get 1 over 27, and so on. So in the second sequence, you're multiplying by 1 third every time. In our last geometric sequence, we're multiplying by a negative 4 every time. And notice when you multiply by a negative, it alternates every time. So what that means is we start with a positive, and it goes to a negative, and then a positive, and a negative which wouldn't happen in an arithmetic sequence. So again, the main difference between the two types of sequences is if you have an arithmetic, that is when you're going to add or subtract to find the next term, versus a geometric, then that would be when you multiply or divide to find the next term. All right, so for the next part, it says for the following, determine if each sequence is arithmetic or geometric. Then can you find the common difference, D, or the common ratio, R? So the common difference is what we're adding or subtracting every time. So this is our D value, what we're adding or subtracting. And the G, whatever we're multiplying or dividing, so each of these right here, like the times 2, times 1 third, times negative 1 four, that's a common ratio. And so we call that R. So to figure out what the common difference or common ratio is, you can either take one term and subtract the one before it. And if you keep doing that and it's the same every time, that's a common difference. And if that doesn't work, check and see if it's geometric. And to do that, you would take any term and divide by the one before it and see do you get the same number every time. So let's do some examples of that. So first, this first sequence, I'm going to check and see first if it's um, arithmetic. Let's take any number. So we'll take our 2.8 and we'll subtract the one before it. And we'll get a number. So if we do that, we have 2.8 minus 1.4, we get 1.4. All right, let's see if that's consistent. So now when I take 5.6 and subtract 2.8, do we get the same thing? And it's 2.8. And since these are di different when you're subtracting, this is not arithmetic. If you're subtracting every time and getting the same number, that would be arithmetic. So now we're going to try and see if it's geometric. So again, you just pick any number. And now we're going to divide by the one before, and 2.8 divided by 1.4 will give us a 2. So then you pick any other number. Let's try this one. Let's try 11.2 divided by 5.6. And we also get a 2. And it should happen for any number. So now when we try like 5.6 divided by 2.8, we should get a 2 every time. And since we're dividing, what that means is if we go the other way, we'd be multiplying by 2 every time. So here, the common ratio is 2, and this is geometric. Okay, let's try sequence number 2. A hint for this one is it alternates. It goes from positive to negative, positive to negative, so it's most likely geometric. So let's test that. Let's pick any number and divide by the one before it. So negative 25 divided by 125. And we get negative 0.2. Let's try another one. Let's do 5 divided by negative 25. And we should get the same thing. We also get a negative 0.2. And we could try it one more time. 
negative 1 divided by 25. And again, we get <clears throat> our negative 0.2. Oh, it's not 25, I'm sorry, it's by 5. So negative 1 divided by 5, and we get 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2. So again, if it's geometric, you can take any term and divide by the one before it to find the ratio. And so then if you're working forwards, you can see we're multiplying every number by negative 0 0.2 to get to the next term. All right, let's try the next one. Again, I'll try and see if this is arithmetic. We pick any term, let's do the 2.6 and subtract the term before it. Okay, so we get 1.2. Let's do 3.8 minus 2.6. We get 1.2 and so on. So we can try every term and you should get 1.2 every time which means this is arithmetic. And if it's arithmetic, it's a common difference. What are we adding or subtracting every time? And here we're adding 1.2 to get to the next term. And our last one, again, let's just take any number. We'll try, try and see if it's arithmetic. We'll subtract the one before it. And you can see that this one's arithmetic. And the common difference is 2. Is it arithmetic? All right, so difference is 2. We're adding 2 every time. Okay, so again, to find the common difference or ratio, you take any number and either subtract the number before it to find the common difference, or divide by the number before it to find the common ratio. We can express these terms recursively. So here's a new word for today, recursively. A recursive formula is where you use the preceding term or terms to find the next term. So if we take a look at this, what's our starting value? And from that starting value, how do you get to the next term? So here's a, a, an example where we have the sequence, again, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The starting number, we say a sub 1 is how we say it. So we'll call this a sub. Sub means subscript, means it's smaller. 1, that's how we say that. And that just means the first term. So here, the first term is 2. The common difference is, again, when it's adding by every time to find it, you take any number, subtract by the one before it. So here the common difference is also 2. So the recursive formula, you need two things. You need to tell someone where to start their list. a sub 1 is 2. Start your list there. And then we say, all right, to find any term, a sub n minus 1. n minus 1 means, or a sub n, sorry. All right, to find any term, you take the term before it, and we're going to add 2. Okay, so let's write down what each of these mean. Okay, so a sub n means to find any term or the nth term. You take the number before it, preceding term, I'll call it this, the number before it, preceding term, and then you state the rule here, it's add 2. So all you do to find any number in the list is you take the number before it and you add 2. All right, let's do another one that's um, arithmetic. Again, what's our first term in this sequence? Again, sequence ordered list of numbers, zero. What are we adding or subtracting by? Again, if you don't know, take any term and subtract the one before it. Negative four minus negative three is the same as negative four plus three, which is negative one. So here we're subtracting one from each term to get to the next term. So the recursive formula looks like this. The first term is zero. To find any term, we take the term before it and we subtract 1. This is a recursive formula. Again, you need a starting value, you need to know where to start, and you need another rule. Here we're subtracting 1 every time. If you don't give me a starting value but the rule, I could start at any number and then we could have a different sequence. All right, let's take a look at it um, in a geometric sequence. So here our first term is 1. And what's our ratio here to find the ratio? You take any number, divide by the one before it. So here we're multiplying by 2 every time. And so the recursive formula looks like this. Start at 1. To find any term, take the term before it and multiply by 2. A few ways to write this. You can do parentheses 2. You can do a dot 2, but sometimes it's hard to see. You can do a, an x or times 2, but that looks like an x sometimes. So when I do times, I'll use a parentheses. Okay. And our last geometric, 
sequence. This term starts at 1. Oops. And the ratio, again, take any term, divide by the one before it. So here we're multiplying by 1 third every time. So starting value is 1. To find any term, you take the term before it and you multiply by 1 third. Okay, two left for you guys to try, and then we'll summarize and do an example of what you might see in your assignment. Okay, so this one right here, um, we know that it's arithmetic because it says, all right, what's the common difference? So that tips it away, it's arithmetic. Um, starting value is 0. 0.5. To find the common difference, you take any number, except for the first number, and you subtract the one before it, so the common difference is 0. 0.5. So our recursive formula, start at 0. 0.5, to find any number, take the number before it and add 0.5 to that number. So then it says find the eighth term in the list. So we could just go ahead and keep adding 0.5 every time to find. So again, if this is our list of numbers, we start at 0.5, and that's 1, 1.5, 2, and so on. This is the first term, so that's a sub 1. Here's the second term. Here's the third term. Here's the fourth term. So to find the eighth term, we can just keep adding 0.5 every time. Um, but you can program your calculator to do this. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so let's type in the first term and then hit enter and then do the rule. So plus. So when you see the a and s, that's like a sub n minus 1. This is the previous term. And to that, we're going to add 0.5. Now you've programmed your calculator, so every time you hit enter, it's the next term. So here's term 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eighth term is four. So let's write that down. Um, just write it right here. The eighth term is four. So keep adding it every time or you can program your calculator to do that for you. Okay, let's do one more. Um, this one's geometric because it has a common ratio here. One, two, two, three, four, so our first term is one. To find the ratio, you take any number and divide by the one before it. So here we're multiplying by negative 4 every time. So first term is 1. Um, to find any term, you take the term before it and you multiply by negative 4. Find the eighth number in the list. Again, here we have the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. So you just have to multiply negative 4 three more times. But on our calculator, we can program that. I'll press doc B to clear this. All right, so to program it, we'll start with our starting number, which was 1, enter, times negative 4. And every time you hit enter, it's the next term. So here's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. There's your eighth term. Let me write this down. OK. So right here, we would say the eighth term is negative 16, that are, yep, negative 16,384. All right, so to generalize, in general, recall that a sub 1 means the first term, the starting value. a sub n means any term. Um, and n represents the term number. And d is the common difference. What are you adding or subtracting by? And so if you write the rule, I'm just going to write that right here, it'd be the preceding term plus or minus the common difference. So the recursive formula will have two parts, the first term and then the rule. For recursive for geometric formula, again, you do start again with the first term. And to find the next term, to find any term, you take the term before it and multiply by the common ratio. And n again is the term, and r represents what is your ratio, common ratio. Oops, I forgot my fraction. Let's so write common ratio. Okay, so hint or asterisk, sequences can have the same common difference or common ratio. But because they start at different numbers, they have different patterns. 
for example, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 2, 4, 6, 8 have the same common difference, but they're not the same sequence. So again, you need to include the starting number, a sub 1, in order to get the same list of numbers as someone else. Okay, so two examples and then some practice, and tomorrow we'll look at this more. So the first example, a stadium with 75 rows has 10 seats in the first row. So let me underline 75 rows, 10 seats in the first row, 15 seats in the second row, and so on. Can you write the recursive sequence for this right here? I should have given you one more just so we could figure out if this is arithmetic or geometric. So let's say there's 20 seats in row 3. Then we can figure out is this arithmetic or geometric. So first term is 10. To find any term, take the term before it. And what's happening? So if I make a little table sometimes, or make a list, it's easier to see. But let's see, row number and seats. OK, so in the first row, 10, 15, 20. OK, so this is like saying a sub 1 a sub 2, a sub 3. All right, so you can see that this is um, arithmetic. We're adding 5 every time. So our equation, to find any row number, you take the row before it and you add 5. So this would be our recursive sequence, starting value and what we're doing every time. Find a sub 6 and explain what it means in terms of the stadium. All right, so I'm going to use my calculator to find the sixth term. So again, I'll start with 10. And then every time we're adding 5. So here's row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in the 6th row, there's 35 seats. Okay, so again, it says explain what this means. It means in row 6, there are 35 seats. Which row has 50 seats? Okay, so here it is. In the sixth row, there's 35 seats. A sub 6 equals 35. Which row is 50 seats? OK, so I'm going to keep hitting enter and counting and see what row until we hit 50. So this is row 6, 7, 8, 9. So row 9 has 50 seats. Row 9. Or you could say A sub 9 equals 50. The ninth row has 50 seats. Okay, last one. Is the following sequence arithmetic or geometric? Write the first five terms. You can see we're multiplying here. So this means times three every time, which makes it geometric. Uh, the common ratio would be three. We're multiplying by three. So to write the first um, five terms, start with a two. Two times three is six. Six times three is 18 and so on. You can program your calculator to do this. So I'll show you that. Okay, so we start at 2, enter. We're multiplying by 3 every time. So here's the second, third, fourth, and fifth term. So I'm going to write all those down. Here are the first <clears throat> five terms. So again, this would be a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. Okay. So in your assignment today, you're going to practice identifying arithmetic or geometric, A or R. Can you write the recursion? And can you solve the problems?